Today we're taking a look at the Creality Halot 1 resin printer. Now, this guy is similar in size, form, and function to the other offerings from Creality's resin line, but the print difference is vast. Now, we should note that this printer uses a proprietary slicing software known as Halot Box that was developed specifically by Creality for their Creality Halot machines. Now, the software works really, really well, and I haven't come across any issues with it yet. It is very, very similar to Chidu Box in design, but it is not the same. It only allows you to add Creality printers at the moment, but the profiles and the print settings it gives you for these printers are amazing. We're not going to dwell too much on the software itself. I will have some videos up covering the software and how to use it. So if you're interested, stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button. But for now, I think we should take a look at some specifications. All right, so this is the Banggood page for the Creality 3D Halo 1. One of the reasons I brought you to this page is because it's the cheapest one I've found. You can actually get it for 260. They charge around 280 on the Creality site and Amazon then go as high as 300 and up to 350 actually. I've seen them, they've come down a little bit. It's generally in that $300 range, but this is a good deal. I'll put an affiliate link down below if you want to purchase through that. It'll help the channel out a little bit, but it does come from China and it is going to you are going to have to select the right plug. So make sure you pick the right plug. Don't worry about the shipping. The shipping is actually pretty quick. And I have this picture brought up because I wanted to show you up here. This machine, unlike the other Creality resin printers, homes to the top here instead of down to the bottom. And that is for the reason of allowing you easier access to the vat when this is in the home position. So it kind of makes sense. And since that's a fixed distance and the only thing you're really adjusting is this gap right here, it actually works really, really well. So let's scroll down and the specs for this are way down here at the bottom. Right in here, there we go. So here we see the machine size is 221, 221 by 404. And that is the machine size, not the print size. The print size is listed just below that. And it is 127 by 80 by 160. So slightly larger in two dimensions than the LD00 series, but slightly smaller in the height dimension. But I mean, that's not a big deal. It's a minimal difference. So the print quality difference is amazing. And I'm going to show you guys some prints in just a few minutes. You can see everything else is pretty well the same. The engine noise is less than 60 decibels. I don't believe it even comes close to that. It's probably under 40. It's really, really quiet. Um, the thing that we wanted to look at, let's check out this integral light source. They have a lot of information on this. Um, and this is something that they developed internally to more evenly spread the light along the plate so that it uh, uh, actually hits it at the same distance and, and you get better accuracy this way. And I can testify to the amazing accuracy of this printer. Like I said, I'll show you some models here in just a minute, but this system works really, really well. I do have an LD002R and I have an LD002H. I also have the UW rinse and wash machine from Creality. This Halot machine blows those other two resin printers away, and it does work really, really well with the rinse and wash station. So it would be a great addition if you already have a couple Creality printers, but if you don't have a resin printer yet, this is definitely the one that I recommend you get because it is amazing in quality. And since I keep harping on it, I think maybe we ought to jump over and take a look at those models now, and you can kind of get an idea of the detail that we are talking about. So enough talk about what this baby can do. Let's take a look at some of the results. So the first thing that I printed on this machine was this Diablo right here. Now this thing came out amazing. You can see the teeth perfectly. You can see the tiny little ripples in the muscle. The detail is epic. It does need a little bit of cleanup. I uh, gotta do a little bit of sanding on some points before I actually paint. But that's because I haven't adjusted the support settings at this point. But just look at that detail. That is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And it came out really, really nice. And I'm very, very happy with this result. There is one other thing about this model that I found very interesting. I accidentally dropped it. And I busted off the arm. And you can see right here on the back. Uh, I didn't use resin to repair that. I actually used nanopolymer adhesive and it worked extremely well. So um, that's something I'm going to keep in mind for future tricks. So 
let's take a look at this this is just a little case I designed this is a box for a hot end you get a little piece of foam and a cutout in there and you put the hot end in there and I'm gonna be painting this and putting the hot end inside and giving it away on a live show later on this year as well as a couple other prints that we did now this is a piece I made for an electromagnet now this one does have a tiny flaw in it where did it go no this must be the reprint I did print another one of these uh, and it separated a little bit right here because I didn't clean the vat out after this guy and there was a little something stuck to the screen that I wasn't expecting so after taking care of that and cleaning it as I should have the first time this was a really nice part and I also left the little nubs here from the uh, support so you can see with the regular Halot box settings what kind of support you're gonna get now those do sand down pretty easily as you can see from the bottom of this you can still see these dots here but for the most part it is pretty smooth so get a little more polished work done there too before we're done and in honor of Halloween I have this guy right here so this is the see no evil hear no evil speak no evil um, three wise skulls model so this as well needs a little bit of cleanup there's some dried on residue from the resin itself but the model itself is meticulous just fine fine detail and super duper nice printer so overall I am very very pleased with the Halot 1 I'm looking forward to getting a Halot Sky and trying that out but you cannot go wrong with the epic level of detail on this printer Another big advantage I found with this printer that I wanted to mention over the LD002 series was the fact that this plate is a sandblasted plate and the adhesion on it is phenomenal. Not only does the rafting surface in a Halot box work really well, but I have not had any issues in removing any of these models from the plate. They come off super smooth without any big gouges or scratches and the surface seems to stick every time. So I'm really, really happy with that. But I also wanted to point out that they made a redesign, excuse me, they made a redesign in this plate's design itself. Uh, in the other printers, the LD series, there is a bevel from here to here as well. So you can pour the resin off of all sides. This one is a little bit thicker plate, a little bit higher up, and it's only chamfered on two sides, which means that it makes a little bit less of a mess. Normally when you pull the plate off, what you would do is tilt it to one side to get the resin to drip off. And since the uh, beveled side kind of collected resin, it would drip all the way across the plate. And with this system, it doesn't really do that. It just pretty much runs down the side. So it works a little bit better and I'm really, really happy with that minor design change. The other thing that they did was update the firmware and the screen a little bit. The USB stick is now in the front as well as the computer connection. And I really appreciate that because I had a couple of the LD machines right next to each other. With the USB stick sticking out right here, I couldn't get them quite as close to each other as I wanted and it ended up taking a couple extra inches of space for each one. So this is a good change, and I really, really like seeing that. The other thing I wanted to mention is they do have an app with which you can use to control the L uh, excuse me, the Halot 1. So uh, the Halot Sky also works. I haven't gotten my hands on a Halot Sky yet. Expect that review to come in the future. I'm very much looking forward to getting one. That'll be the largest resin printer that I've had so far, but it's going to be a couple months on that one yet. So... Um, Basically, guys, I definitely recommend checking out this printer if you're getting into resin printing. I have all of the other Creality machines except for the Sky. This is by far their best. And since Creality seems to be a major player in the print space and people tend to love their machines right out of the box, they have really big communities for people to offer you help on Facebook and tons of readily made YouTube videos and whole channels dedicated to them. So if you're thinking about getting a new printer, I definitely recommend trying this one out. If you have other resin printers, you haven't been happy with their either the adhesion or the model release or some of the other features, still I would say give this printer a go. It's definitely a buy. The model quality as you saw from that Diablo is spectacular and I cannot cannot stress that enough so um, with the other printers I did have a couple of issues where I didn't have adhesion or I was having problems with the uh, F uh, with the FEP sheet because I was going through a lot of them um, this uh, with the fail rate being so low you're gonna save FEP sheets because when when a print fails and it prints all that extra plastic down here and then you gotta take this off and either flex it out 
or scrape it off and clean the vat, you're putting stresses and pressures on that FEP that don't really need to be there. This tends to work every time, so you don't really have those cleaning stresses of changing this out other than when you give it a simple wipe because you're changing resins. So. I'm gonna leave it at that. I hope you guys check out this printer. If you do, or if you have one, let me know in the comments what you think of your Halot printer. If you have a Halot Sky, definitely let me know if you think it's better than the Halot 1. I think the quality is probably the same, but the Sky is so much bigger, the possibilities are pretty much endless. And don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, I will be doing a video series on Halot Box, so if you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell for notifications so you can be notified when those videos go live. And as always, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like on this video. That helps other people find this video. And they can kind of see the amazing quality and detail you can get from this guy as well. Now, real quickly, while I have the model brought up, I do want to point out that this model was too large for the build plate. And I had to scale it down. And in fact, in order to get it to print properly, I had to scale it down even slightly more than this. So... For it to retain all of that detail after being shrunk so much, I am thoroughly impressed with this machine. That's going to be it, guys. Technivorous out. Stick around, guys. I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here. And if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. Technivorous out.